What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at Sundance 2024, brought to you by Filmio. Filmio is an incredible company that puts the green light control in the hands of creators and fans. If you want to learn more about Filmio, check out their website, film.io. I'm so excited right now. You all know this. I will happily say this on camera. My old ass, I just love saying my old ass too. <laughs> my old ass is my favorite film of Sundance 2024. I want all like the good distribution vibes to go your way because I want to end the year by calling it one of my favorite films of the year. Jeez. My heart was bursting at the seams. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so sweet. I mean, Thank insane. you. Oh you know how much I love the fallout, too. It's not like I went into this movie not expecting it, but I feel like like the m emotional wallop and the way that this movie inspires you to rethink your past, present and future is just like that's not an easy thing to come up with or to convey via film. So, my God. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Will you be the publicist for the film? Just Happily. Follow you have us all a wonderful around. team. We do have back, a wonderful but team. But I can we, promise you, we'll I'm here to more. promote all you want. Um, <laughs> clearly, I love your movie. A lot of people will first learn about the film via Sundance. So, would you mind doing the honors and give, giving a brief description of Mild Ass? Yeah. Um, Mild Ass is about 18 year old Elliot who does mushrooms to celebrate her birthday. Uh, in the Canadian wilderness and has a trip where she meets herself at 40 and her played by Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> Iconic. And her 40 yeah, year old. 39. 39. 39. 39. 39. Here Good I am. clarification. Oh, I'm right. Sorry, 39. Uh, and uh, her older self tells her some things that happen to her in the future that don't sound too great to her and kind of sends her on a bit of a tailspin. So, so smart. I have a big complicated two-parter about the journey from first feature to second feature because I feel like a lot of people out there think that when you make one good film, the second one should come easy and that's not always the case. What is one surprising hurdle you had to overcome to make this movie happen? But then I also kind of want the opposite. Something about the reception the fallout got that did make my old ass happening and happening the way you wanted easier. I got to make this movie because of the fallout. You know, I, I was, we, it had a lot of success at South by and we were so fortunate that HBO bought it and it was amazing. And a lot of great people saw it. And so I had a meeting with Lucky Chap, our amazing producers, just they had seen the fallout and wanted to meet and just generally kind of chat. And during that conversation, they were like, well, do you have any other movie ideas? And I'd been thinking about this idea, but I was like, I don't know if anyone's going to let me make it. And I just loose pitched kind of a log line to them, like I just did to you on the Zoom. And they were like, that sounds really interesting. Like, let's talk more about that. And so basically from there, I, I started building out the script and working with them on it. And then we found our amazing financiers, Indian Paintbrush, who are just incredible and give so much creative freedom and just really are all about supporting the director's vision as our lucky chap. So it was the dream situation. Um, so that was the great thing. And that was what kind of came on the heels of the fallout. And I think probably the most difficult part of it was the pressure I put on myself because I was already feeling like I didn't really know what I was doing with the fallout and was shocked it's, that it worked. <laughs> and then, I, you know, I had this amazing opportunity and, you know, my husband's a musician and, and it's like the sophomore album thing is like yes. a thing. Oh my gosh, yes. And I was really feeling that with the second feature. Whereas when I was making the fallout, I was just like, who, let's see what happens. Like I just was, ignorance was bliss. And this time I knew the stakes. And so that was... That was the most challenging part was getting out of my own head. And it was obviously a big step up in many ways, just all around um, it, from that movie to this movie. The stakes were a lot higher. It felt higher. So, so good. As, as a perfectionist who puts a lot of pressure on herself, I get the mentality. But I don't know. You just watch these two movies and you know with certainty that they're, like, there's some like natural ability there that... Mm -hmm. Like it's there, it exists, and it will follow you to every film you make. Yeah, thank you. That's I mean so it. Kind. I mean it. All right, Maisie, I'm coming your way. For not only mm -hmm. your first feature, but it's your first feature, and you're also number one on the call sheet. When you are presented with that opportunity, what is the scariest thing about that? And then, how do you overcome those fears and tackle this performance with confidence? Oh, I think. I mean, the scariest thing about being like a lead in anything just in especially my first <clears throat> project I think it was just knowing that like you kind of have to carry it in a way and if if you don't have um a, any type of spark then it's not going to feel alive and it's not 
gonna uh, be enjoyable to watch and so yeah that, that I felt a lot of um but the the people that were on it like really were like holding a lot of the pressure and like a lot of the weight for me and I, I honestly didn't feel it uh like you know weighing me down or anything um but yeah I mean it was definitely being being number one on a call sheet I would look at it every day and like it just I just couldn't believe what I was seeing um but yeah I think tackling it with confidence had so much to do with Megan and I've honestly like felt so confident and sure in the script like the the, it, the script was so so good that like I just knew that it was all everything that we needed was like there and the confidence that I had in Elliot was like a hundred percent because like I just knew that that uh it was all there already so you just gave Megan and the the team and the environment credit for sure Carice and Megan I want you to give Maisie some flowers right now so again like I said (laughs) for first time in a feature film leading a feature film what is something about her for you as a scene partner and for you as a lead actor in your movie that you really appreciate it and you're excited for more actors and more directors to experience with her in the future you take it first I don't have a ton of acting experience so I can't really like I don't really have much to go off of, but from what I have experienced so far, I would say that, <clears throat> sorry, I sound like Beyonce a little bit. I would say that um, Maisie was, I really appreciated how I didn't feel, I didn't feel like someone was trying to outdo me. I feel like sometimes, like, at least in like training environments, everyone's like, I'm about to, I'm about to eat you up. Or I'm about to steal the scene from you, like, because I'm trying to be the star of whatever. Like, I, it's so competitive, and even sometimes, like, working with one of the very few limited projects I've done, um, working with like whoever's higher up on the call sheet than me, it, it, it sometimes feels like uh, I don't, you like, you're where you're supposed to be because you're where you're supposed to be, and like you'll get here when you get here, but like this is where you're supposed to be, and with Maisie, it just felt like. It just felt, I just felt warmth. I don't know. I just felt so warm. And when I feel warm, I feel safe to like stretch. When you're cold, you know, you might pull a hamstring or something. But like when, I don't know, I just felt really yeah. warm. Thank you. Beautiful answer. For me, Maisie is one in a million, truly. And I will say for this film, the cast manager said they never had more submissions for a role in their ever in their career. <clears throat> and had a really long, successful career. And when we saw Maisie's tape and I I knew Maisie because Maisie had created a song with her sister for the fallout. And I already knew that she was best friends with Maddie. So we had, we were already friends Mm -hmm. and friendly with each other. Um, But I always knew and hoped (laughs) that like what I saw in her was, but it's, what's not always, doesn't always translate. You know, you can't always um, bring that to life on camera. And when I saw her tape, I was like, Artie could see the trajectory of her career, and I think she is one of the most talented actors I've ever met on any side of the camera that I've worked on. And I'm so proud of her because the pressure is huge to carry a film, and she did, you did handle it with so much grace. <laughs> and there, you know, it wasn't easy, and the, the energy it takes to come to set every day and do that. And I think that the, this is only, she's so amazing in this movie, and people have only seen a, a little bit of what she can do, I'm telling you. <laughs> And I oh just am God, so proud this is of her. Ridiculous. <laughs> and so, God, e- like and so easy. And so easy. So easy to work with and effortless and down to play. And every single person that had been in the industry for years that came to her said, Margot Robbie, you know, Aubrey Plaza, these people, they were like, holy. Mm-hmm. You know, like I remember Aubrey pulling me aside and being like, this is, I'm, she said to me on set, Maisie just made me fall back in love with acting, doing a scene with her because she was just this, having that type of scene partner. And that's what Maisie brought to this set and created that environment. And it was so refreshing to work with somebody who was so real. And I hope every director out there gets the chance to work with You're Maisie. winning like the arm chill game that we said okay, before. Yeah, you're, you're, you're in like, the lead, you're in the lead. <laughs> right? Okay, cool. No, I, I, oh can't, I can't wait to watch what she does for the rest of her career. Mm, oh I'm right gosh. there with you. Thank Anything you, you so touch, much. I'm there. Thank Carice, you, I'm thank coming you, back your you. way because I told you before, I am like, I'm obsessed with you. Your energy in the movie was electric. And then you hit the stage and I'm like, oh, like that's just real life too. I need more of this. I want our audience to get to learn a little bit more about you. So a two-part acting question for you. Going into this film, what was an acting goal you had for yourself? And now leaving it, what is a new goal you've acquired for your next film? Mm, Damn. I would say an acting goal I had coming into this? Yeah. I would say... mm, you know what's crazy is I don't really set goals. I just kind of go with the flow. 
Um, like even when I when I moved to LA, I, I, I don't have bucket lists or anything. Even vision boards are pretty hard for me. I don't really set goals. I just, whatever comes my way, I'm just grateful because uh, I just like to create art. So I think when getting this, <laughs> when getting this, I said this is us in another interview, but it's not like I had a lot of, I don't have a lot of offers. Like no one's knocking on my door. Like the phone is dry unless it's like my friends or like, you know, like an Uber Eats or Postmates oh, you just notification. Wait. Just wait to people you see just them. Wait. Wait. But like yeah. on the real though, like no, I'd be chilling. Like I really be chilling and I'd be incognito. If you find me, I'm in the corner, like with a dog. And so walking into this <laughs> movie. Brilliant. Yeah. Shit too. Taco. Shout out Taco. <laughs> but walking into uh walking into this film, I would say because I had faced so much like I feel like life problems at that time. My, I, remember I called you crying on a Zoom one time and I just couldn't hold it in. She was like, how are you? And I was like, good. <laughs> and I just started crying. And she was like, oh no. So I think when I walked into this, my only goal was like, as a person, just to like, try and like, get some fresh air, like literally and also metaphorically. And like, to just, to just be in the moment as much as you possibly can. So that was that. What's the second part of the question? second part is is now that you've done it and you've had the experience, do you have uh, you don't like to set goals, but it was to do you have a new acting goal that you want to go after on another film? As a performer or yeah. like to work with as someone? a pro I I'll take either actually. <clears throat> I'm see my shot right now. Yeah, this is the moment. Um, this is the moment. I, I do <laughs> genuinely call this the manifestation table. Oh shit. I like to make things happen here. You like I, to manifest. I manifested. I would say um, all of it. <laughs> one of them is to work with Coleman Domingo and Jordan Peele and Angela Bassett, please. And I would say as a performer is to uh, get even more crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love everyone you just named. Coleman is one of the most lovely individuals I've ever met in my life. Tell. And he he was a producer on my second favorite film of this festival, It's What's Inside. Mm -hmm. So I am going to to manifest you working on a film that his company produces. Something. Take a meeting while <laughs> you're here. Take a meeting. I'm into. I I'm so that. into this idea. Now that you've said it, it will happen, and I will be sitting there watching it. Um, Maisie, I have to ask you about Aubrey first. I heard when I was watching the film, I kind of assumed that Aubrey had probably been cast first and got involved in the beginning, and then you said it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. So, what was it like finding out that like you grew up to become Aubrey Plaza? Oh <laughs> that was like seriously the best news of my life. Um, yeah. I mean, I was cast first, which is wild. Like you would think, obviously, that Aubrey was cast first. Um, so it was interesting because, like, our you know, we we do play the same person, um, but I was already filming for like two weeks. So my my Elliot was already kind of little Elliot was already kind of established in in a way. And so um, when Aubrey came in, she kind of came uh, more to me. But yeah, no, she was like literally fine. We were going through a bunch of names, and it was like a thing of who looks most like Maisie and um, like more, we were looking kind of in physical aspects and then we just like at a certain point, like just like dropped that a little bit and was like energetically what um, is the most endearing and, and who what, do we love? Yeah, like who, who do, yeah. I, I remember we had a conversation and we were like, who, when you look over on the log, do you want to see sitting next to you? Mm -hmm. And who's like, and saying that first line. Yeah. And we were like, Aubrey. I <laughs> mean, Plaza. Aubrey, I genuinely think Aubrey's like the most like legit. I think so many people try to, do her and like be like her but she really was the start of this whole like she just has such a unique uh just everything about her is so special and um she's like I just feel like she's the most original legit and so I was so excited to work with her and so nervous and they weirdly so have such a similar energy like even though they're not exact physical matches like there are so many qualities to them that are really similar yeah and sense of humor mm -hmm. and when they met it was like very magic you know you could just you could see the chemistry right away yeah we I love her a lot I think yeah that was definitely a thing of we were like is it gonna be so obvious that we're so different and then I don't know I think it we watching leaned into it, it we really did and like watching it back i honestly that's one of my favorite parts of the movie is how different we are and how she's like just a little bit like of a toughened like hardened version of what you would be at 18 which is i'm sure what will happen to me too and that was that's just what happens um but yeah i, I honestly like think our differences 
turned out to be like really sweet and endearing and, and such a perfect pairing it works yeah. so well oh, amazing megan Thank i want to come back to you to talk a little bit about lucky chap indian paintbrush the the companies that you were working with because i always think it's important to to emphasize when those big companies support a filmmaker and their vision the way that they need so what are some of the things they did for you that helped you exceed your own expectations for your work on this film I mean, I this the bar has been set so high for me. It was truly um, every director and writer's dream situation where I got so much invaluable advice, so much support, really smart and thoughtful, insightful notes, and then so much freedom. Um, they really know how to support their filmmakers. That's why they get so much repeat business. I'm doing my next movie with them. Um, it was a really, really... It was a pinch me situation. <laughs> it makes me so happy. Yeah, I feel very lucky to be working with them. And they have just, and everything that is coming to them is so deserved. They really treat, what I will say is on set, it's like they treat the star, the director, and the PA the same. They're so wonderful and supportive and kind human beings first. And that really comes across. And, and you know, after years of working together, you see cracks, like if it's not genuine. It's so genuine. It's so, so genuine. They're lovely humans and so much fun. We had a great time as well. They know how to, they would, you know, throw dinners and and Mm. we would get to boat places and they really know how to create a really warm environment for everybody to feel comfortable. Mm. And again, like I said, the bar has been set pretty high for me now. Mm -hmm. No, like (laughs) truly. Yeah. Makes me so happy to know companies like that exist. It's just like a brighter future for this industry and we need to highlight them as much as possible. Speaking of which, I'll lean into my Filmio question, which kind of taps into that. So Filmio is all about putting the creative control in the hands of the creators. So whether it's on this film or any project you've worked on, can you each recall a time when you got creative control and you didn't expect to get it oh my gosh I I think that so much of I felt that so much in this um movie I think like Megan just her writing I think like honestly as like young actors there's a lot of scripts that you read that don't land and don't feel right and don't feel like super Uh, natural and like Megan's writing I think for all young actors that read it it's like literally chilling because you just feel like you're reading like genuine conversation it's not um it feels mature but still young and it it it, like just really shines such a nice light on this generation I think that doesn't happen that often honestly in film now um (laughs) but sorry what was what was the actual you were, question? You were leaning into it quite beautifully. The yeah. idea of getting creative control when you yes. might not expect to have it. That is where I was going, yeah. was that Megan really, because she wants it to feel so genuine and so real for this generation, she gives a lot of creative control to the actors. Um, and I think like that was so huge for us. Like, yeah. I know for Maddie and Percy as well. Like mm-hmm. it, to, to feel like yourself and to feel um, f- like that freedom is really, I know how rare that is. And, and that was something that I think all of us, like it's one of our favorite things about working with Megan. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. Anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I would say uh, it's, well, besides like me giving myself that creative freedom with my company that I just made, I would say it's definitely this movie because like she said, like people, um, tend to sh- uh, people tend to have difficulties um, writing for young people because that's their target audience. They think that like okay, let's lean super into it. But I think that I think that what Megan touches on so beautifully is that there is no such thing as like there's no such thing as like a young drama is just a young person. You're just a young being. You're like a human being, just being. Like, you are just being. And so I think that she allowed us to just be and actually be human beings. And this that gave me so much license as a performer and as a person. Yeah, it makes it a lot more enjoyable, like genuinely. Yeah. It makes it feel much more like, just like sparky and like yeah. you're, you're watching real people, which is my favorite thing to watch in, <clears throat> in movies. And that's my favorite style of film. And that's definitely, yeah, you give mm. a lot of, a lot 100%. of, you I reach feel like that description out. like reflects how the movie treats coming of age and where someone is at at any point in their life. 
Yeah, I think also a little bit of this for me as when I was acting, I was acting at their age. I like never felt in control most of the time. I I maybe once or twice in a career of 10, 15 years did I ever feel that. Um, So I definitely am trying to curate that kind of environment and trying to write, maybe redo history a little bit. Not every situation I was in as an actor, but certainly the majority. Mm -hmm. Um, And it frustrated me and I'm trying to create a different vibe Mm -hmm. so important we i mean we need more people who will take their past experiences and use them to make the future better for all the artists in this industry Mm -hmm. i'm going to end with a couple of questions inspired by this concept i'm sure you're being asked a lot like what would you tell your younger self Mm -hmm. i tried to like switch it up a little bit (laughs) if you had the opportunity to re-experience a memory from your past what memory would you choose and why oh my goodness experience and not change it no not change it just Just, you know relive it maybe reprocess it for some reason i would just want to go back and relive one day that was totally normal as like a six-year-old like just like morning till night like a summer day swimming in the pool good pick hanging out with your family like as it was when you Mm -hmm. were a kid eating dinner playing with your friends Mm -hmm. just like the simple things not a care in the world yeah not a care in the world that would be going to bed in your like childhood bed yeah Uh Oh. Getting tucked in, like <laughs> yeah. um, that makes me want to cry. Me, we're all like, oh um, shit. Yeah. Um, me and my sister have like talked about this memory all the time because we can't figure out if it really happened or not. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> where I'm from in Oshawa, it's like in Ontario, um, Canada. It's like this really small town, and <laughs> <laughs> and there was this one day we were at our friend's house, and they had like all these little like back weird like like road not even roads just like little paths everywhere and we went on a little adventure we packed our backpacks we got our band-aids and our snacks and Lennon had her little guitar and we just like went adventuring and we found this in my memory it is a Bob Ross painting it is the most beautiful sight I've ever seen and we spent the entire day there and we all literally just played our guitars and just hung out and then the next day we tried to find it again and we literally for for weeks we tried to find this place again and we couldn't find it and we all are convinced that it was like literally a a magical mystical little like fairy tale it was so beautiful and me and Lennon talk about it all the time like did we literally make that up or did that happen so I would relive that just so I could prove that uh (laughs) that that wasn't a dream and that that really happened and our friends remember it too it was literally like god it was so beautiful I would I would go back there Definitely. If you believe it happened. Yeah. Then it, it happened. happened. I swear it. I feel like if more than one person remembers it. Dude, it I could draw it. I could literally draw it from memory. It was like so beautiful. But yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> um, For me specifically, I would say, yeah, me and my brother used to just ride our bikes around with these uh, neighborhood kids in our neighborhood. We call them the Rugrats. And that's because they always got into a lot of trouble and stuff. And we used to just ride our bikes around and just like, just be rug, just be just be rugrats. Terrible in the neighborhood. So I've yeah. relived one of those days for right. sure. Rock solid choice. I have to l- let you go soon. I'm going to end on like a kind of silly one that just crossed my mind. If you could revisit your favorite discontinued snack, oh, what oh snack my God. would you choose? Discontinued? And then I Googled a million discontinued snack snacks and like my heart oh, broke that these I things don't, don't exist that. anymore. I'll go first. Mine would be the cereal straws. They used to have like flavor on the inside and you like suck like milk out of them. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. (laughs) Wait, that's such a good question. I've honestly, every snack is discontinued to me because all my favorite snacks are Canadian snacks and they've been discontinued because I don't live in Canada anymore. Um, So in that regard, like all dressed chips, ketchup chips, crunchy bars, any type of Canadian snack, so superior. And to me... That has Smarties. That has been discontinued. Smarties oh discontinued. yeah. Well, Smarties they're discontinued in America because I live in the states and I can't get anything. Huh. So, yeah. Wait, what are your Smarties? They're like they're like M and M's, just chocolate little oh. colored. This we, me and Lennon got into this the other day because we were confused because they're rockets in Canada. I know. They, yeah, they're called but rockets. here they're called Smarties, like the little like pilly things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Are Dunkaroos discontinued? So I, I Dude. know this information because I was looking it up. Dunkaroos, I think, were were discontinued, but then in 2020, they were brought back. So apparently Whoa. they exist. But I would have chosen Dunkaroos. That would have been my yeah. choice. I was never allowed to have them as a kid, but I would like trade them. Oh, you know those I mean? are so good. Yeah. We had a lot of, jo- like my, my pick was probably Kudos. 
They were these granola bars that were like pretending to be granola bars, but Mm. were really candy bars because they were covered in like either candy or like Mm. drizzled in chocolate. Mm. So good. So good. That's such a good question. (laughs) I you have really amazing questions. The best. Amazing, amazing movie deserves the best questions, the best press, the best distribution, the best audience. I am willing all of that in your direction right now. Thank you for sharing your experience with us today. And thank you for this movie. Thank you. you. I mean it it. to everyone out there. My old ass. (laughs) Keep an eye out for it and stay tuned. We'll have more from Sundance 2024 for you very soon.